Family Theater presents Edgar Buchanan and Jack Bailey. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Retired, starring Edgar Buchanan. And now, here is your host, Jack Bailey. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Retired, starring Edgar Buchanan as Joe. When Joe Hunter took the New Haven down to New York, he tried to think of everything, anything, but what the doctor's report would be. If the report was good, he and Effie could take that vacation they'd planned up in Vermont. But if it wasn't good, well, they'd have to figure things out. As I said, Mr. Hunter, with plenty of rest, not too much activity, and, well, you know, Uh just take things easy. You'll be as good as new before long. Uh I see. Well, uh, but what about my job, Dr. Johnson? No, that's hard for me to say. I mean, you should retire. That's what I meant by taking it easy. But, well, look, as a doctor, I can only advise you. Oh, sure. You're thinking about money. Well, I'm really eligible for a pension right now. It's just, uh, I thought maybe a few years more, maybe put a little bit aside. See, our children are all raised now. Two of them married. And the third one's still at home with you and your wife, huh? No. No, Bert was killed in Korea. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. But Pete, my younger boy, he's doing just fine. Uh, Got a new job, nice wife and baby. Wow. Marge, that's my daughter. She's got two kids and lives out in Chicago. You sound pretty proud of (laughs) them. Yes, indeed. They're fine children. Of course, Pete, uh, well, he kind of had a hard time finding just the kind of a job he liked. But he's got it now. He's a salesman. Connecticut and Rhode Island Territory for a stationary company. He's a born salesman, that boy is. Well, my advice is, as long as you can retire on a pension and your children are independent of you now, I suggest you retire from your job and really take it easy. But, Effie, you don't understand what this is going to mean to us. Now, Joe, just sit down at that table and stop your worrying. I get this cake in the oven. And we'll start worrying together. But it means getting along on a pension. Of course, the house is all paid for. Kids are settled down now with Pete getting that good job. Mm-hmm. But it isn't going to be easy, Effie. And it's going to be mighty boring. There, now. And you always said you couldn't stand a man underfoot all day long. Well, you're not gonna be. I'm not? Joe, for years you've been depriving yourself. So as your children could have the things you never had. Well, now that's all right, I suppose. But what you've been doing the past seven years is wrong. Oh, if you... I'll do the talking for a minute. Why, you've let Pete walk all over you and make you feel sorry for him when... I don't see what this has to do with your saying I'm not going to be underfoot. I'm getting to that. Why, every time we'd get a little bit ahead with saving, something would happen to Pete. Well, something would. Joe, do you realize Pete's had seven jobs in the past two years? Well, I didn't think it was that many. Seven. He quit them all because there was something wrong with them. Not enough pay... No chance for advancement, some such nonsense. But each time you dive into our savings account, pay his rent, buy his food for a couple of months until just the right job came along. Well, Polly and the baby had to eat. Sure. Pete's got six suits hanging in his closet and an expensive wristwatch. 
You got two suits. One of them almost wore out, and you never owned a wristwatch in your life. Now, Pete's my son, and I love him, but... Well, now, young people are different nowadays. Yeah, I when should we... say they're different. They're going to start being mighty different right now. All right, now. Pete's got a good job, and he's going to have to keep it, because you and I aren't going to be around to help him out of his money jams. Well, I couldn't do much for him on a pension anyway. If he... What do you mean, aren't going to be around? Joe, what's the thing you always dream most of having? I've had a lot of dreams. You always said, if I could have about 25 acres, <laughs> some chickens, a cow, and a little house, I'd be a king. Yeah, I guess that was the wildest one. It's not wild anymore, Joe. It's going to come true. On a pension? I had a real estate man look at the house, and he says we can get 6000 for it. 6000 Why, that's... I know, I know. But the neighborhood's awful old. The house is terrible, old-fashioned. Well, Six thousand won't even buy a little farm. No, but I know where there's a ten-acre one that we could buy for ten thousand five hundred. Well, that's over four thousand more than we'd get for the house. Well, I we... got more than four thousand saved up. You... you what? Mm-hmm. Now, you've always been so soft about money with the children, I... Well, maybe it's kind of deceitful, but... <sighs> When I saw our savings account always going back down to zero, well, I just couldn't stand it. So I opened an account at another bank six years ago. You what? And now, hush. And each week, out of my household money, I put some in the bank. Uh, I never guessed. Good thing you didn't, too. Why, if you had, Pete would have gotten that car he wanted when he went to college. <laughs> big convertible. And you don't... Effie, you really think we can do it? We could raise our own chickens and vegetables. Maybe we could even get a cow. Why, you could work when you want and take it easy when you want. No bus to rush for in the morning or at night. Well, Effie, it's always been just a dream. <laughs> you, you know, the kind you, you never think will come true. Of course, it's just ten acres. But I'll be like a king. Or, or maybe a prince. <laughs> sure, Effie, I'll settle for being a prince. <laughs> Wait a minute, Pete. Don't ring the doorbell yet. What's the matter? I... Well, do you think you're doing the right thing? Look, Polly, we've talked this out ever since I got home tonight. And you agreed with me it's an opportunity I just can't pass up. I know, but you folks... I mean, if there was some way we could do it on our own. Not moving in with them and your mother taking care of the baby so I can go back to work. Honey, there isn't any other way. You have to go back to work for a while. Look, as I said before, the job has terrific possibilities for advancement. But... It means a big cut in salary at first. But your mother and father They'll be might... glad to have us. I guess you're forgetting the money we owe on the furniture. And the baby's doctor bill that isn't even paid yet. All right, Pete. Hi, Dad. Well, just the people I wanted to see most. Have I ever got good news for you youngsters? Well, that's a coincidence, Dad. We've got news for you, too. Why'd you do it, Joe? Well, I couldn't see any way around it. Mm, I'll bet you didn't even look. Well, besides the salary cut this new job will mean, they're paying on some new furniture. More new furniture? Effie, uh, people have to sit somewhere. We went through the same thing at their age. Yes, but we didn't buy the most expensive furniture we could find. Mm, prices have gone up. You know that, you do the shopping. Joe. Pete's our son, Effie. You're not doing this for Pete. If parents don't help their kids... You're they... doing it for Bert. Well, that's a crazy thing to say. Why don't you realize you're doing it for Bert? Bert's dead. And you feel you didn't do enough for him while he was alive. So this is how you make it up. 
I don't see anything wrong in helping your kids. But this isn't help, Joe. Not anymore. For the couple of years you thought Pete was going to be called into the service, you gave him everything you possibly could. Well, he wasn't called. I'm glad he wasn't. One son is enough. Bert was my son, too, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, Effie. But with Pete, you just couldn't get out of the habit of giving and giving. You spoiled him, Joe. He thinks life is just a big bunch of balloons. You, you, you pop one and there's always another, a prettier color. Uh, maybe. Where are you going? Just looking out the window. Moving trucks out front. Well, all right. But that furniture of theirs is going to be stored in the attic. If they can find the room with all those trunks and other things. Effie. Hmm? Pete was thinking that... Uh, Pete was thinking what? Well, that uh, he, he, we might use some of their furniture here in the living room. Do you want to sit on those spindly little chairs in a, a, a Davenport that looks like half a strawberry pie? Effie, Pete and Polly are coming up the walk, and I, I haven't said anything about the farm and the chicken... Joe Hunter, don't you ever stand up for yourself. He thinks he's helping us out, having to try to get along on the pension in this house. Now, please, Effie. He means real well this time. I don't know, Joe. All these years, I still don't understand you at all. Well, here we are with the whole works. Hi, Mom, Dad. Hello, son. How are you, Polly? Well, I'm kind of bewildered with all this excitement. I think I'll take the baby upstairs while the moving men are in here. You go right ahead, dear. I'll be up in a minute. Hey, they work fast. They're bringing the stuff up the walk already. Yeah, I'd better get to work, too. What are you doing, Pete? Oh, just making room for some of our things in here. Your things? Oh, now look, Mom. This stuff is so old. Our things will look Pink much... Davenports. It's a divan, Mom. I said Davenport, and that's what I meant. You, you can call it any fancy thing you like, but to me, it's just a Davenport. Well, whatever it is, here they come with it. Well, it was quite a party they had here last night. Yes, indeed it was. Every plate and glass in the house. You should let Pete and Polly clean this up, Effie. I have my kitchen a mess until Sunday noon. No, thank you. I got my roast to put in, vegetables and potatoes to fix. Here, let me clear a place for you at the table. You can have your coffee. I did manage to make some. Thank you, Effie. You look tired, Joe. Well, I, I didn't get much sleep. Not used to the noise, I guess. <sighs> Joe, they've been with us three months now. How long's it gonna go on? You said after Pete got on his feet, you'd tell him about our buying a farm. If as long as we started this, let them do it right. They've got the furniture all paid for, and Pete says he just owes the doctor $25 more. You know, I worry about you, dear, but... Instead of helping you, I just make matters worse, being so cranky and nagging about it. You've been fine, honey. Just fine. But I see you pacing around this house with nothing to do all day, and I get so... No, that's not true, Effie. I made all the new shelves for the pantry shelves, and... Shelves, shelves, shelves. The house is bursting at the seam with the <laughs> shelves you've made. That's all I know how to make. Mm. I suppose I could try making a rocking horse for the baby, but she's pretty young yet. Wouldn't you think the baby would know it's Sunday morning and let us sleep? Morning, Pete. Oh, she wants her bottle. In fact, she's making quite a racket about it. Morning, Mom. Don't you think you better heat it? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Here. Let me do it. Men are all thumbs. Coffee smells good. I think I'll have a cup. If you can find a clean cup to pour it in. <laughs> that was quite a party last night. Quite a party. It certainly was. See, your boss was here, wasn't he, Pete? Yeah, you bet he was. It doesn't hurt inviting your boss to a party now and then. Well, what, uh, what about a raise, son? Does it look like one's coming along? You want to know a secret? What? Bob gave me a strong hint last night. In about a month, I can expect a pretty good boost in money and a promotion. Now, how about that? Oh, son, that's just wonderful. I knew you'd do it, boy. Talking about secrets. And that isn't all. Bob's putting my name in at the country club for a membership. The country club? Uh-huh. 
You, you mean you're, you're going to join the country club? Well, sure. It's good for business, you know. Nothing like success breeding success. And not only that, well, many folks sit around the house so much. Now we can all go to the club on Sundays for dinner. Do you mean to tell me you're actually going to join the country club? What's the matter, Mom? Here's the baby's bottle, Pete. Thanks. Oh, by the way, we won't be home for dinner. We're driving out to Bob's summer place for the afternoon. We're driving out to Bob's summer place for the afternoon. Joe, we've just got to tell Pete about... Joe? Joe, what's the matter? I don't know, Effie. I feel funny. Kind of dizzy. No, no, don't try to get up. Just, just sit there for a minute. I'll be all right. Don't worry, honey. Be all right in just a minute. Catch my breath. Here, take one of your pills. Here, dear. Drink this. Thanks, honey. I... Joe! Joe! Effie, you, you got to promise not to say anything to Pete. Now, Joe, lie back and rest. The doctor said you had to rest. Wait, but you, you got to promise Pete would think it was him. I don't ever want him well, to think that. Effie, you got to... All right, dear, all right, I promise. He's a good boy. Just has to find himself. Find himself? He will, Effie. He will one of these days. And we'll have the farm. Yes, Joe. We'll have the farm. There isn't anything worth hurting your kids for. That's what we're here for. For them. Yes, dear. Just like Pete and Polly. For their baby. Mm. Pete's sticking this time, Effie. I can feel it somehow. After all, that's more than half his battle. Yes, dear. Now I'll try and go to sleep. You need lots of sleep and rest. Pretty soon, little farm, Pete and Polly will settle. Shh. 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 I'll be here. That's it. Sleep. Sleep. I wish Mom would come downstairs and let us know how he is by now. Pete. This all kind of seems to tie up somehow. Tie up? What do you mean, Polly? I don't know. I, I haven't figured it out, but... Remember when we came here that night to ask your father and mother if we could move in with them? Yeah, I remember. And when he told us he had to retire because of his health, you jumped at it saying our moving in would help them out, too. Well, sure, and it has. After all, Dad's pension is fair, but... Not enough to run this big old house. Why, well, the heating bill alone Wait would... a minute. I agreed with you at the time. I really did think we were helping them out. But now, I don't know. Now, look, Polly, of course it's helped them out. Maybe not. Yesterday, when the mail came, there was a real estate man's card in the box. And across the bottom of the card, he'd written, I have a party interested in looking at your house if you're now ready to put it on the market. Ready to put it on the market? What do you suppose that meant? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Take care of the baby till I get back, Pete. And don't tell your mother where I've gone. Oh, I won't. Hey, where are you going? Mr. Hallowell said your mother told him she had some money saved. And with that and what they'd get from the house, they could buy the little farm your father's always wanted. Always wanted? 
Well, I... I remember when we were kids, he used to talk about a farm, but we thought it was just pipe dreaming. Sometimes pipe dreams mean an awful lot, Pete. Polly... I think we've kept him from seeing that dream come true. Good grief, the way I barged in here, big as life, thinking I was saving the old homestead. Oh, but you didn't know, Pete. Well, I should have known. Families are... Well, well, families sense things about each other, but no, no, not me. No, oh, Polly, they've always been so swell, more than swell. Letting me float around from one job to another. I think it would have been better if they'd been different. Yeah, yeah, sure it would. You want to know something, Polly? They're going to get that farm. And you know how? We're clearing out of here. Oh, yes, Pete. And let's not tell them we know anything about all this. Oh, well, I've got to apologize, Polly. I can't let them oh, think Peter, that... Oh, Peter, it'd be so much better if they didn't know. If it's hard for us to get along, your father would never forgive himself. Let him think we want to get along by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that would make it a lot easier. How is he, Mom? Shh. Sleeping. I think he's better. What happened? A little too much excitement. The party we had last night? Mm. He didn't sleep very well. Mom, uh, Polly and I were talking and... Mm -hmm. Well, we think, like, like you say, that... Well, the excitement and everything, uh, our being here... Well, maybe you and Dad would be better off by yourselves. By ourselves? I... I know this arrangement makes things easier for everyone financially, but... Well, Mom, much as we love you and Dad, I... I, I don't think two families should live together. I didn't want to say anything for a while because... Well, because I know Dad's on... on pension, and it isn't enough for you to get along with. But... but when I get the raise next month, I can help you out. Pete. And it's about time I did. Pete, that... that's sweet of you. But I think Dad and I can manage very well. I was thinking we might even buy a little farm someplace. A farm? Hmm? I was thinking about it. Hey, you know that's a real good idea. You really think so, Pete? You bet I do. I... I, I seem to remember Dad used to talk about a farm once in a while when we were kids. Hmm? That's right. I bet he hasn't thought of it in years. Why don't you suggest it to him when he wakes up? It might even take the edge off of our leaving. You're a good boy, Pete. You better get some rest yourself, Mom. Tell Dad we'll see him tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead and tell me. You big faker. Well, you're, you're the one who said I was asleep. Lying there, eavesdropping. Well, they're my eaves. I paid for them. <laughs> Oh, Joe, isn't it wonderful? They want to move. Uh, don't tell me you fell for that. What? I'm not saying they don't want to move. But that's not the main reason they're doing it. <laughs> I told you Pete was a born salesman. You... You think it's for us? Who else? I'll bet he hasn't thought of it in years, says Pete. And you swallowed the bait. Hmm. So you're mighty peppery for a man who had a fainting spell half an hour ago. Well, I just happen to be feeling peppery. <laughs> Joe, he... He is a good boy. He's a fine boy. Sure he is, honey. I noticed something when I was lying there with my eyes shut, listening to him. How much his voice sounds like Bert's. Hmm. You remember when they were kids and... One of them would yell up from the basement or out in the backyard. Mm. We weren't always sure which it was. Oh, well, I could always tell. You could not. Well, maybe not every time. Lying here just now sounded a little like Bert talking. Mm -hmm. On some of the words. Mm -hmm. They're a lot alike. You still think I spoiled them, Effie? Yes. But I'm glad you did.
Some years ago, during a summer vacation, I was driving through a Midwestern state. After several hours of driving, I began to feel kind of drowsy, so I pulled into a small town, parked, and started into a diner for a cup of coffee. There was an old man sitting on a fence next to this diner, and he was very busy carving a long wooden chain. It was a beautiful piece of whittling, and I stopped to compliment him. Ain't nothing to it, he said. <laughs> All you need is a good hunk of wood, some patience, and a sharp knife. Especially the knife. Dull knife's no good. Well, I never got a merit badge for wood carving, so I agreed that he was probably right. Yeah, he said, it's a lot like people. People are like a knife. Well, that stopped me for a minute, but he went on. After you use a knife considerable, it gets kind of dull. Won't cut nothing. So what do you do? You get yourself a good oil stone. Before you know it, it's back in shape again. All ready to serve the purpose it was made for. The purpose it was made for. Well, that line stayed with me, and I began to see what he meant when he said, people are like knives. They've got a purpose. But often a man gets himself in the same condition as an old knife. You might say he's lost his edge and isn't serving the purpose he was made for. Lucky for man, though, that there's an oil stone handy. You see, prayer is man's oil stone. In other words, if you hone a knife every day, it'll always be sharp. Same with a man. If he sticks to saying his prayers every day, he'll always be sharp in the sense of being in, in shape to serve the purpose he was made for. Yes, sir, that old fellow's statement made sense to me. Daily prayer keeps a man in touch with his creator. The same, of course, applies to families. That's why Family Theater brings you this program each week to remind you of the great good we can all derive from family prayer and that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Retired, starring Edgar Buchanan. Jack Bailey was your host. Others in our cast were Michael Hayes, Gene Bates, Lee Millar, and Barbara Fuller. The script was written for Family Theater by Elaine McMahon and directed by John T. Kelly with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present... Profile of a Hero, starring Gene Evans. Richard Denning will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.